afternoon, I'm Emily Liska with the Jacksonville Historical Society and a project called The Melting Pot. And The Melting Pot Project is sponsored in part by, by the Florida Division of Cultural Affairs. Uh, so I welcome you, Deborah Yupong. Thank you so And Sonny Yupong. Well, thank you, thank you, welcome. And I know you have uh, quite the story to tell. And we'll start by talking about your home country, what you consider your home country, where you were born, where you grew up. We're going to talk about what your life was like as, as children and growing up as teenagers as well. Talk about how you met and uh, what brought you to the United States and specifically to Jacksonville. Yes. So if we could just start with uh, your birth and where you're from. Deborah? Uh, okay. Yes, my name is Deborah. I was born in uh, Nigeria. Uh, my father's name was Simeon. Uh, my mother's name was Agnes. So as a child, we started the same way that is here. We go to middle school, from middle school to high school. Then after that, I got a job with a, a radio station. You know, before that was before I met my husband. My husband had to leave. In 1982. What did America. you do at the radio station? I was working in the, as a cashier in the radio station. A cashier at the radio station? Mm -hmm. What would a cashier do? Why did they need a cashier? They need a cashier because back then there was no computer. I mean to compete whatever the services that people need. Suppose they want, somebody wants to put like a memorial announcement. Oh, okay. Or business so advertisement. Advertisement. I see. Advertisement. So they have to pay cash. You know, my country cash and carry. There's no credit card. Oh, there. really? Cash yeah. and carry. Okay. Yeah, by then, but I think they have in there. So we have to count how many number of words. Then we, they're paying in cash what before was, we announce it. What was school like for you? Were you in public school? and? I was in public school. We used to walk like a mile or two. To school and come back. He's, even as little children? As a little children. And how many years of schooling do you have in Nigeria? Um, I should say six years in uh, middle school, then five years, almost ten years. Almost ten years of school mm -hmm. is what's typical then typical, in Nigeria. Yes. And uh, what part of Nigeria were you born? I'm from a Kwa Ibom state. They call it a Kwa Ibom state in Nigeria. And what part, of, what's the weather like there and what's your housing like? Uh, the housing like is like a, you know, like a family house. Everybody, the house is built in brick, you know, brick houses. Some people that are rich, they really live in mansions and some, you know, where some people are really poor, they live in thatch houses. Oh. They call them mud houses. They oh, mud like, houses. Yeah. Okay. And they use like a mud to do the roof. And what yeah. about your family? You were in a brick house, and how many brothers and sisters? I have one brother and uh, three sisters. You know, even though they're, they're not alive, but we have a good family house. None like of four your bedroom houses. None of your bro brothers or sisters are alive now. Only one brother. Only yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. And your parents? My parents are all gone. So let me find out a little bit about uh, Sonny now, and then we're going to find out how you met. So tell me about your early life and growing up. Where were you born? Um, I would just echo what the, exactly what she's saying right now. Uh, I was born in um, 1955 in a small country called. Uh, Nongabong in Obil, in Akwaibom State. And that's part of Nigeria, yes, correct? Yes, oh, that's, that's like a village. <laughs> and in Akwaibom State, Akwaibom State is a state in, uh, in Nigeria, one of the states in Nigeria. So that is, uh, I was born there, uh, started my life uh, at a, what we call a primary school. It's just like going to high school here. You have to go through, I think, like you said, uh, six and five or six and six. And immediately you finish that. Sometimes it's very difficult to get admission into the university. It's very tough because of competition, because of uh, 
uh, very few universities, so you, you struggle to get admission. It, it was amazing. So some of us have to find something to do. Uh, Someone like me, I remember I was a teacher for a good three years, you know, I thought... You it, were? Yes, you taught? Yes, what I, were you teaching? I, almost everything, you know. You know, when, you, when you're teaching in a, I mean, a high school, back home, they, they, you take, they give you a class. That's, uh, uh, what do you call it, grade one, uh -huh, okay. or grade two or three. You take them all from wherever all the classes. Every Without class. any college? No. No college, just right as out a, of high as, school? As a man, yes, as okay. a man. Okay. In fact, they considered college then a high school because it was, it, it, it was, I don't know how I can say this, it, when you out of high school then it was very, 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 you ready to go. Yeah, it was ready to go. So I, I did that for a couple of years, I think it was three years, then I moved into something that uh, my, I was born into a family of uh, uh, my father, my mother, uh, my brother, two brothers and two sisters, and, and my father is dead, my mother is dead, and one of my brothers is gone, but I still have a brother who is living today, and my two sisters who is living today. Are they still in Nigeria? They're all in Nigeria, yes, yes. So did both of you grow up speaking English? Were you speaking English? Did you learn English in your schools? English is, is, yes. English is one of the national, in Nigeria because of the multi languages that we have in Nigeria. Then you have to, it was, and all, we were under the British uh, government. We were, we were forced, we were, in order to communicate with, when you step out of your zone, so English was the national language for now. Oh, it was the national language yes. then. And was there any other language that you oh, grew up yes, speaking? Yes, 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 Nigerian? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. We speak up there, my wife, we speak a language called Cal is it Calabar, right? Mm -hmm. Calabar. And which is a, some sort of uh, derivative, derivative of, yeah, of yeah, Nigerian? Yes, Nigerian, yes ma'am. Yeah. So, uh, so you, you know multiple languages multiple, then? Multiple. Yes. Multiple. But you grew up speaking English. Did your parents speak English as well? No, we have to learn it. Had to, because, to. yes. In because of you have to, okay. in order to communicate. Yeah. So let's talk about the two of you and how you met. And were it, was that before either of you came to the United States? Well, go ahead, Sonny, you start. <laughs> 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 uh, we, I met uh, uh, like I said, uh, I, I was a little bit uh, an old man, you know, if you look at our age, about age where it's a gap of, is it five or something, so I was looking for something good for me, you know, <laughs> then, and the, main, the most reason that, and when God died, the time is right, you know, you, God will put the right thing in your way, that I was in the process of coming here. Yeah. When you met Deborah? Yes, were, almost, okay. almost close to, you know. When I met, so we were uh, what America called dating before, you know. But we, we wouldn't get like in full marriage. I didn't go to do the basic the, uh, marriage that we call. And when I met her, and I got admission to come here. So my brother who was here told me, that if, if, if you have a wife, you have somebody that you're committed to, go ahead and marry, because when you get here, it's gonna be difficult for you to come back. And so I just, within a period of, I think it was 1981. So I, there was money around a little bit, so I jumped into Gallibrick, then I talked to her, she said that she will marry me, then we have to go through the, the way that we marry back home. How, how do you marry back home? You, you, cannot, you can't walk away from that. You have to go to the parents and beg them. Beg them? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You too, Deborah? You had to beg no. your parents? No, I beg, I, I, I'm the one who Oh, you go to her parents? Yes, I go to have the parents. And ask them, I've seen somebody that I want to marry. I want to be my wife. Then they tell you what it takes. 
you know, to do that, and they're gonna give you a list of what you have to bring. What did you have to bring? And I got to, I had to, I had to go with everything. <laughs> I had to go with that. There's, there's a lot of things. I'm not talking about the drinks, you know, uh, beer. Uh, 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 I mean, this uh, what do you call this? Her drink? Uh, her dowry. It's a dowry. Dowry. You gonna give a dowry? Yes, ma'am. There's, there's a. Thing so, can you my... remember some of the things your parents required, Deborah? A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. Like the food. They require you know? not even food. Like drinks, all kinds of drinks they have here. Wine. All liquor. Drinks, all all uh, brands of liquor. Liquor. You know? Liquors. And then uh, sodas. And sodas. Then they start, what do they stick? That's thing that they can, they walk can, can, walking can. can. Walking can. Walking can. Walking can. Then the clothing and the shoes and oh. I mean. A lot. A lot. So, so not uh, not farm equipment or animals. I don't even know if they had farms. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't oh, yeah, forget I have, I, I, I have to have two goods. And, goods I, yeah. and I, I have to give what they call a, a ship, a ship, okay. yeah. a ram, not a ram. Uh, yeah, a ram yeah. for being a she being a fair daughter. Oh, first off. And that tradition, you have to give a ram. You know, I have to give. Yeah. I have so to give first daughter is yes, premium. Yes, that yes, it costs yes, more. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So you gathered all those things yes. and did give it. So mm -hmm. were um, were both your families in farming, or did they raise animals for survival, like uh, to milk animals, or did they both have both both, both farming animals. both animals? Yes. Uh, so did your families do anything other than farm to make a living? Yes. Did um, yours? Yeah. Back I told you, I don't want to bring that. Up. Last time, uh, uh, my dad was. One of the pioneer, uh, I, I think I told you about what we call palm tree, palm oil, you know. Palm oil. Palm oil. Yes, palm oil. Palm okay. oil. Yeah, he has yes. a machine. He, that, yes, there was there was we, we built a big machine that uh, we we drill palm oil. My dad would get then people in. Mm -hmm. And and how do you harvest palm oil? I don't know. Can you tell me? You know how tree, how tall the palm the palm palm tree is. I don't I don't know if it is. Have you seen a palm tree? Well, the ones in Florida and then, okay. can be tall. Okay, we have people who would go. Uh, I don't know how to do it. They climb by a rope. Okay, they, they, you know they climb up and, and then go with a with a message uh, with the machine. They will call me, you know, and then cut whatever the the ripe one. Not the green one, and the thing will drop. Just from that height, you sometimes if you that you hear you come and drop, boom. And there's a way to select it and pick it up, and then they take it to the what we call used to call the the mill where all mill, 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 where my my dad said that where we can drill it, and they're gonna get some people in to work on it and separate the, the palm the oil. Yeah, exactly. From the nuts. From the nuts. And then get it all. That's, that's the way it used to be. And my dad used to say that. In the, he used to have a big gun on that. You get that all in and then take it to the market and sell it every weekend and then come. So he has, there was other thing beside the, uh, the farming. And that was a good business for very, your family? Very good business. Is your, is, very good business. Is your uh, brother still in that business? Oh, he's been, he's been abandoned for a number of years. He's been abandoned, abandoned yeah. None of us can get into that, yeah. It was, it was tough, you know. Mm -hmm. So, Deborah, how did your family make money? Yeah, my, my dad used to work with a construction company called RCC then. So, while my mom was uh, doing marketing, she goes to the market and buy stuff and resell them. Then my mom was a teacher to us at then, but that was how we survived. And that is how you survived. Mm -hmm. Now, what about your marriage? Was it uh, was it a Christian marriage or yes. was it a it yes. was a Christian yes. marriage? Yes. A Christian yes. marriage. Yes. Any particular denomination? Um, not necessarily. I'm because I was born into the Apostolic Church. The church I'm still running today. Okay. So we have to marry based on that. Uh, I mean that uh, the church doctrine. So it was a church uh, marriage, you know. 
And what is the name of the church again that you were born into? The, the, the Apostolic. Oh, Apostolic. Apostolic. The one that is now. Yes. Yeah, the the Apostolic. Apostolic. And what kind of wedding did you have? Uh, was it a big party for the neighborhood? Or was it in Deborah's neighborhood? Or your neighborhood? Or how did that work? I, I, I would want to tell you it was, uh, it, it was big. Uh, but the, the, uh, the one of the funny thing was, uh, I didn't do the wedding, uh, the marriage ceremony here. You know, I had to go back home to do it. And by then my wife has already joined me here. Eh? Oh. Yes. Oh, so you yes. You were both here and had to go back home? I have, I have to go back. Eh? Okay. The, the family, the family required me to come back and do the, the real, what they call cultural marriage, right? I had to go back and get into the real cultural marriage and, you know, it, it was big, you know, with the whole big family, the, the entire village. Uh, in fact, I forgot I could have brought my picture because still I've been home, you know. To show the photographs. To show, yeah, the photo, yeah, exactly. Well, so you came here and, and tell me, I think I know why you came here before yeah. marrying, but yes, if you'll so. go ahead and tell that story. Uh, the reason I was here, I mean, I came here was, you know, like I said, there was not enough school, university back home. So after you're looking for school, there's no other way, no place to go. And if you have a place to go, they're going to require you to come and pay the money that you don't have, you know. And sometimes your parents have to pri uh, pay the uh, bribe to go into university. So uh, you have to look for admission somewhere. So I put admission, I applied every other way. Uh, uh, India, United States, uh, Great Britain, everywhere through an admission, you know, I, I for me. So fortunately for me, I have uh, admission here in the United States, you know, to come. And you, uh, so you, you were accepted at was, Edward Waters College? I was accepted at Edward Waters College, yes, ma'am. If I had an Edward Waters College and one university in Washington, uh, I think they were too, too bad. I decided to come to Jackson because I have an uncle who was teaching here that I would come just to have a little bit of a <laughs> relief to somebody to stay with. So at this time you had met Deborah. You had asked her parents yes. for her in marriage, yes. and Deborah had agreed to marry you, but you uh, headed over to Jacksonville to start uni college. Yes. Yes. So you started your studies, but at what point you were in the middle of your studies when you returned home to... I, 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 finished, uh, I finished my first degree. I mean, I, I finished my first degree, a BA in, in okay. business administration. And public administration, I started a little bit working, a little bit thing, picking the money. Okay. And that's the reason I, I decided to go back to, then when my father-in-law called that I should come and finish everything that was supposed to be done. So we have to go back to do that. So then you returned back. And you were over here at that time too, Deborah. Yes. You were already here. Um, no? Yes, you were here. Yeah, yes, yes you see. were here. Yes. And you were working? Yes. And so what were you doing at that point? I think that was the time we had a baby, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we could, she couldn't we travel with me. Because yeah. I was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Let so, wait, let me... Let me tell you story. So, did you have the wedding without Deborah? The oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can... Uh, our tradition, you can do that. It yeah. was a tradition. It wasn't that a real wedding. It was a yeah. tradition, you can do that. It was a big real wedding. So, what they required me to do, uh, if I see it, my denied this I had to take a picture, yeah? A whole picture of her. Eh? By the time I got home, they already made a, a big old picture for me to to represent her. The, my father-in-law would use that, and I just walk into a cell like I'm upsetting her in night on a picture, you know, and stuff like that. It's just a tradition, you know that. Uh, so you don't yeah. even have to be at your no, own no, wedding. No, 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 no. That's like it was like a tradition. It was a tradition. Different, yeah, from, different from, 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 from the wedding. Yeah. Okay. From the wedding. And you yeah. had the two of you had already married here, maybe here in the United States. Not the United States. No, no. 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 everything done in back home. Everything. Would, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Before okay. I came. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a traditional wedding that I went. What I told you that I went to meet the parents. 
you know, whatever they ask you, you have to supply that. If you take care of that, then they call you again eh, to come and do the customary wedding. So, so you just did a civil yes, wedding, civil, like and civil. then you later have this yes, big party. Yes, yeah, amen. But yes. you don't. <laughs> to go to because you had a baby. That's the thing. Okay. So now you have uh, one child. You have the big celebration back in uh, in, in Nigeria, and you're here in Jacksonville, Deborah, with the baby, and tell and, and so a little boy, a little girl, a little boy, and then you've had other children. Yeah, yeah. four children. You have four children. Four children. Yes. And. You tell us a little bit about your children. How old are they now? Um, my last born is 15. Oh, your so youngest is 15? Oh, my. So, so they're starting all over. So my first born was born in 1982. He, he left me with a six months pregnancy to come to America. Oh, so you were so, six months pregnant, pregnant yes. in Nigeria, yes. and he came. Mm -hmm. Then you had another... Yeah, when I came over, okay. you have three. Children. I see. One was born ninety five. One was born ninety seven. Then this one was born two thousand two. The last one, when I was in my nursing school. And said so while you were in nursing school, so yeah. you've been studying nursing here. Where did you study nursing? At a Florida State College now. Very nice. And so now you are involved in that profession yes, as well today. And and so you're involved in medical care and. Um, Reverend Yupong, talk about what you do because you have more than one yes. uh, professional position. So if you'll talk about what you do here in Jacksonville now. I, 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 I would, you know, in a nutshell, I wouldn't want to go too far, but I want God has blessed me when I am. Um, I started with a little, like, the convenience store, you know, what do you call a convenience store? Yeah, I think I told you last time I called a. Uh, Skinner Daily, Skinner, right? I, uh, I, 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 I lived that for like two, three years, and it didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. And I left. Uh, I, I think I closed it down. I went. I worked with the uh, United States uh, Postal Office, uh, Post Office. I worked there for for many years mm -hmm. to a uh, supervisor level. Then at a certain point, there was something that I was supposed to be, you know, uh, grandfathered into the system, you know, but it didn't work well. And they wanted me to go back and see, be, so I said, I'm not going to, I won't be able to take it, you know, I think it was God's time anyway. So I left both of it, I think 1990, something like that, Nine, no, 2000, I'm sorry, 2000. Uh, I resigned, I left them. And immediately I left them, uh, they, some friend, a friend of mine called me about it, we discussed about something. He said, you can try something. So I said, okay. So um, I said, what do you mean? I said, this is the size. Okay, let me try. So I, I sat down in the house. I drafted uh, some kind of flyers and stuff. I said, I can do this. I can. The next thing, God put in my spirit. I read it. When I read, got a place, I said, I'm going to start a... Uh, getting a supply medical equipment to wave out somebody wanted. And to cut it short, it was just a matter of time, you know, but it was hard. Uh, because I, I, I needed, the, there was not enough capital, then I have to go, you know, thank God for credit card that's available. The company that I was dealing with was willing to give me credit. Then when I, when I sell the equipment, I paid them back. So I did that for I think a couple months and close to a year, and God willing, everything just pick up from there. Then I had to move from a small, a small place that I started with. I moved to a bigger space right on this century Boulevard. I got me, I think it was a, a 3,000 square foot building. I put all the equipment, anything that you want medically, you know, a power chair, a wheelchair, my own chair, the extra, whatever you need for me, that's what I was supplying for the past uh, 2000, I think 2000. 
And that has that business been good to you and it, your family? It, it was it was when very good. First started, it, it was very good at the very first I would say the first ten years of it. First ten years. Yes. And you're still in the business. Yes, so. ma'am. It's still in but I turned around to because of this uh, because of the church uh, I'm involved now. I turn it back to my my son, uh, Sonny Junior. He's the one. So the business is still on right on the Street Boulevard, right there. Yes, so the son is still in the business, and yes. you're involved. Yes, ma'am. Um, and so you do that, but you also, you and Deborah together, started a church, yes, this church, yes, and we're on that property now. And so, how long ago did you start this church, and how is that uh, going for you? And does it take up a lot of your time, and are those all of your jobs? Because I know Deborah still works yeah. too. Uh, the, the church um, was was I, I don't want to say was it was wasn't it was the right time for the church. No, it was the very right time because I've been going worshiping in different churches since I've been to Jacksonville many years ago. I've been to so many churches, you know. And I was brought up in a, a Pentecostal a church, you know, that I tell the, the Apostolic Church. Then my spirit wasn't that catching with where I was going. And I, I had so many other small churches before God put in my spirit. I think it was 20, uh, 2012, 2012, uh, that uh, it's time for you to do something different for me. So, and with the blessing that God has blessed me with what I told you with Genesis medical equipment that I was doing, uh, there was money that God has blessed me with. Then the Lord said, I want you to put that money to, to do for the work of the kingdom. So, uh, I used that money immediately. I said, Lord, I have to listen to you. So I used that money and I put it into the church. So we started a church. I called, there were about 10, 12 members, 12 people, they called me, they said, Pastor, so I called them for a particular Saturday, we had a meeting, I said, how are we going to do it? He said, there's no money, I said, don't worry about money, God will provide the money. So after the meeting, we decided, said, on the 7th of October 2012, we should start a church, and that was it. And then I had to run around and get somebody to, in fact, the very first, uh, Building we had was right there. Say building right up, right up down the corner there, we, and we stayed there for a year. We hope, uh, I think then we moved here. I think 2013, 2013, and then we we've been here for that. And God has blessed the church. And everything is moving as you see. And one of my pastors just walking right now to 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 witness or do this. So the church is moving. The church is gone and everything is going well with the Church of God. And much of your life, both of you, centers around this church. Yes. And it's a priority. Yes. It is a priority it's for a priority. you. And, and on, I guess, Sundays, you actually eat your meals here, and, yeah. and, and the congregation dines together. It's yes. your yes. church family. Yes, yes. yes. It's, it comprises of other people that is not even from Nigeria, even Americans. Part of our church. Yeah. So you do. It's a multi, multi uh, international church. So you attracted Nigerians, but you attracted a lot of a lot, others yes, yes, as well. Yes, it, it's all nation. It's, it's international church. So anybody, including you, can come here anytime you want to and worship with us. So it's, it's everybody. Yes. And Deborah, with all of this going on, you still work. I still work. And you have long hours, correct? I go better. My yeah. body's getting used to it. Me. <laughs> Your body's getting used to it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's a priority. Uh, yeah, if I don't even put my work as a man thing, but the church. For now, it's time to work for God. Mm -hmm. So you, you you work, but but you really feel your real work is with this with church, church, but yes. you still are dedicated to your nursing yes. position. Yes, so I have to pay bills. Yes, yes. <laughs> and let's talk about: Do you own a home here, and where, and what part of the North Florida is your home? Um, the Lord has blessed us uh, with a, 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 a good home. We live on. Uh, 
what they call it. Uh, Even west side. West, west, west side, side of the town. Mm -hmm. And all middle of the road. Mm -hmm. And then you down to subdivision called Foxwood subdivision. It's a big, I mean, it's a big subdivision over there. Uh, we we live there, and, and like I said, God has blessed us with that. And my wife sometimes went to want to go live in the, in the other marriage, and I say I can't afford it. <laughs> Not till uh, we we find right where we are now. Well, you don't yeah. exactly live near your church. But no, you, no, you, we out. You must have strategized where you wanted and needed your church. Because the church is in the Arlington yes, neighborhood yes, of Jackson. Uh, most yes. of our members that live They're around here, here yes, so yes, we don't mind driving all the way. It's about 20, it's about 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Not, not too far. Jacksonville, uh, for those who are outside of Jacksonville watching this interview, it's a very geographically spread out city. Uh, and in fact, uh, oftentimes considered the most geographically spread out city in the contiguous United States. So 20 minutes away is not, not, bad. not bad at all, not at all. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about where your family is today, other than I know you have at least one or two children at home, I believe, but then you have two older children. Are they off on their own? And yes. how has that worked out for you as immigrants to this city? Has that worked well? Uh, I have, uh, like I said, I have my son, my uh, my other son, all Sonny. All the children yeah, are here. All the children yeah. are okay. Uh, Sonny, Sonny, my Sonny Senior is the one is running the Genesis Medical you. And I have my uh, Samuel, he's about, you don't turn 22, right? Mm, 22. Uh, he's it's in the college. He's right? in the college now, uh, West uh, University of Flo West Florida and Pensacola. Mm. So a little way from home. Yes. And my daughter also doing a, a what is she studying? Doing neuroscience. Neuroscience. And where know? is she? What school? Boko Ram. Boko Ram. Oh, in Florida. Uh, so your children are spread out during yeah. the school year. Florida yeah. Atlantic University, yes, ma'am. And the last one is with us now. It's still with you. At 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 Ed White, uh, Ed White uh, school. High School. My last, my last boy. So. Has the United States and Jacksonville allowed you to realize some of the dreams you had when you were a young person back in Nigeria? And do you feel like you'll always stay here or you might return? I'd like to hear from both of you on that. And uh, what you like most about this country and what you miss most about Nigeria. So all those uh, questions I'll throw at you. And what I'm, I learned most about uh, America is, is a land of opportunity. If you're ready to, if you're ready to meet with your dream, that will encourage you. I thank God there's something they call student loan here. Back home there's no student loan at all. You and your own. No student um, loans. No student loan. So I mean, uh, it's a land of opportunity if you really want to work. If you want to make your dream happen, it's America will. Uh, would encourage even with all my children. I mean, just going to the government that is going through the birth and everything. So I come to realize it's a, it's not a land for lazy people. If you want to make it happen, you really have to work. This is no we didn't want to be a burden to the government or the city. So that's why we decided to work. We even be able to help those back home I mean, it would financially. Oh, you were help. You help people back home no, financially. We help those, yeah. We help you those that cannot, yeah, to survive. So I like America for that. It's a land of, of, of the dreamers. Yes, I hear about dreamers every day. If you're ready to work, if you're ready, if you are, if you are serious, you know they're ready to back you up. It doesn't matter where you come from. So I thank them for that. Do you? Feel like your children are very Americanized? Oh, certainly, certainly. They don't even speak that language at all. They don't even know what we're talking about. And so, if you, you know, go into some here. dialect of Nigerian, no, 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 they don't know. No, they don't. No, no. So they they're strictly English speaking. Strictly, speaking. strictly yeah. Americanized. Yeah. Yes. And uh, what do you think is the most uh, shockingly American thing about your children? Or is there anything that's shockingly American to you? Or 
at least very American. But yeah, what I'm happy is that they don't have to go through what we went through back home. They are very free to enter into universities. Even while they're in high school, they're looking for them. Yeah, the colleges are asking for them, do you want to do this or can you come to high school? Or this. So I really thank God for that. They have an opportunity. And apart from that, you know, they grow up here. They're not, <laughs> they don't think the same way we think back home, you know. They even they want to correct us. Mom, say this, say this. Oh, don't do this, don't do that. So in terms of language, they don't have to go through language barriers as we are today. They just blend into the society. Reverend Yupon, do you have any thoughts about what you have embraced the most in the United States and in Jacksonville versus your your life in Nigeria and and what you might miss about Nigeria too? Yeah, I, as, as I started, uh, as I started, uh, I told you that uh, the opportunity that uh, the uh, America gave me and uh, or education uh, to even have admission to come here. That was an opportunity. That's one of the greatest things. Because I, I was looking for admission in some other places but I couldn't I couldn't get education that I wanted back home. So because of the uh, United States, uh, they gave me that admission, that opened the door for me. So I thank uh, USA for that opportunity that they granted me to come here to study, to be a student to get myself to where I'm at today. And I thank the city of Jackson. I came in here, I've uh, been through things, if not five, six mayors in Jackson, but you know, from uh, Austin to Zuri, from Zuri to Peyton, from, no, not Peyton, uh, the university. But, so I've been through, you know, to the last one we have now, voted for all of them. Amen. You voted for all of them. Yes, yes, You've had your citizen. American citizenship yes, in a, yes, a long time. Yes, you know? yes. So I voted for, I voted for all of them for my city. So the city has been good to me. I don't have anything. I never run into anything in the city of Jacksonville. And I always say when I'm driving, I say I am, I am, I'm a citizen. Period. I never had a, a police problem. The police never stop me and say, oh, "What do you have in your car?" So, so uh, because you, you put yourself the way it's supposed to be. So the city has been good, and the United States has been also good to all of us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Thank for you. being Thank here you. today and letting us interview you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you for choosing us, <laughs> <laughs> among others.